Hey guys, how are you? All right, so we're gonna embark upon a new little series of videos. They're gonna be quick, short videos uh, playing with a new stencil in my Etsy shop. This is called Four Faces for obvious reasons. Um, and I'm not gonna just release a stencil and tell you about it. We're gonna actually do a few different things about it and I'll show you kind of what I had in mind with it when I was designing it, which I hope you all find interesting. Um, so I was thinking about doing a series of videos, um, experimenting different ways to do faces in our art and different techniques, different materials. And I thought, you know, for a lot of people out there, myself included, especially when I was first getting started, it would be really handy to have some sort of guide that you didn't have to necessarily um, stick to religiously in, in your work and your finished piece, but that you had some sort of like guideline of where different facial features should be, the basic ones anyway. That was the idea b behind creating this stencil. And then I thought as I was creating it, I was gonna just do one face and I have other face stencils in my shop. I will include some pictures of them uh, here somewhere in the video. Um, and they're bigger, they take, th this is a six by six, so they take up the whole um, stencil. Uh, but I thought if it would be great if we had a smaller one and that each one of the faces was a different shape and they were generic or semi-generic so that they could be male or female. That was the idea behind this. So I thought, okay. So I sat and did some drawing, got with my stencil cutter, what if and NC, um, and I will link their Etsy shop in the description below. They not only cut stencils for themselves and sell them at their shop and, and cut them for me, they will cut them for uh, just about anybody. So um, if you're interested, I'll leave their Etsy shop and contact information below and you can contact them and see if you can work something out. Anyway, um, I talked to her and um, she said she thought that was a great idea. Let me see what I could do. And we came up, this is what we came up with. And they're positioned, most of my stencils with four images on them like this are positioned in a way that you can cut them apart if you want to. Lots of people, uh, myself included, if I'm at home, uh, like to just use them as a whole stencil. But when I'm traveling, especially, and sometimes if I'm working in a small journal, I do like to actually cut them apart. Um, and the, this is what they look like when they're cut apart individually. Um, and especially if you're traveling with your stuff, um, then having them cut apart is handy. It fits in a smaller bag, right? You could even tuck them into the cover of your journal. Um, so we're gonna play with these today. I'm gonna show you what my, I'm gonna show you a page. We're gonna do a lesson. I'll encourage you all to do something similar now. I'm not saying you have to have these to do this because you don't. Um, you could um, definitely use what you have. You could sketch out something in pencil to start with on the page. You could um, actually use carbon paper or, gra or, or um, art transfer paper and a picture of a face from a magazine to um, transfer the basic shapes of the face onto your page before you get started. You just want the very basics, okay? Um, so we're gonna fill this journal up here over the coming weeks with just faces done different ways using the stencil. And um, each one's gonna be an experiment. Each one's gonna be a different technique. And I think each one's gonna be a lot of fun. Now this journal is made with 70 pound drawing paper. These are the ones that I make and I do sell some of them in my Etsy shop and I don't know how many are left. I don't think there's any left with white paper. I could be wrong. Um, but I have usually white paper, black paper, tan paper, and gray paper. So um, I'll whatever is left in the Etsy shop at the moment, I'll link below. Um, I had to actually make a white paper one um, for myself because my personal stash didn't have any in it. So. Um, Anyway, it's just a homemade journal. You could use whatever you want. This one measures about, ruler, I need a ruler. Uh, seven by just under five. 
And this is my actually favorite size of journal to work on. I do work on smaller ones and slightly bigger ones, but this is actually my favorite size. So the first thing you wanna do is find your face or face stencil that you wanna use. I'm gonna to use today this one with a square jaw. And I'm gonna use just a plain number two graphite pencil. I'm gonna sort of center the stencil in the page and I'm gonna use my pencil oops, through the stencil to trace out the basic shapes of where things are going or should go in the face when we're done. So when you're done, you'll have something like that. Let's zoom in just a little bit. There we go. You see? Just a very light touch. I didn't go very dark with the pencil. Don't dig any holes to China. Um, let me grab a piece of hard plastic, which I like to have between. So this is a little like journaling trick, I guess you could call it, that I do. I have lots of these little sort of plastic dashboards. That one will work in different sizes. And whether I'm working like this or I'm downstairs with my daily drawing, which is downstairs, by the couch, I put one of these between the page I'm working on and the next page. I do tend to be a very messy artist and sometimes I'm working on paper that um, while it can take most things, if I get it too wet, things leak through and then get the next page dirty. Um, I also, it also gives you a harder surface to work on and press down on, okay? The next thing you're gonna need is a black pen. Uh, this is just a regular Bic Crystal black pen. Nothing special, um, nothing you know fancy, just a plain old pen. You just want it to be something that dries down completely and doesn't stay wet for too long. I also, because I'm not young anymore, I need these. <laughs> Before we get started. Okay, so the first page that we're gonna do in here, we're going to just do a technique where once you get started drawing your face, you don't lift your pen up off the page. Uh, the goal is to not lift it up at all. I always find myself lifting it up at least once, but the goal is to not lift it up at all. It's not to create a perfect neat pay, uh, face. It's to, um, to actually to do a messy face. You're gonna do a messy face. And um, if you do it with a pen that's water soluble um, after you do your face, and maybe we'll do, maybe we'll do two on this video now that I'm thinking about it, and we'll use, not that one. Uh, my other pen is downstairs. Pilot Varsity pen, which is water soluble. So if you do it with a water soluble ink, then you can go in with a water brush and you can smear the ink or blend the ink a little bit to create some shadows. So uh, you know what, I think we're gonna do both ways. We're gonna do dry and then we're gonna do wet. So, you ready? All right, let's get started. I'm gonna um, speed forward through, well, I'm not gonna speed forward through it, but I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna talk, I'm gonna focus on what I'm doing, and I'm gonna put some music, and we'll be back when I'm done. That was done in real time. I didn't slow it down. I didn't fast forward it. And you cr you end up with something interesting like this. He's pretty cute. All right, so now we're gonna turn the page. And this is where this little hard piece of plastic is even more important because we're gonna do one with ink that's not 
um, uh, waterproof. Uh, the other thing you can do when the ink is dry is you can go back. So the idea is for the stencil to just be a guide. But then when you're done and your ink is dry, go back with an eraser and erase all the pencil lines. You don't have to do this, and I, uh, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I just generally don't bother with erasing. But there you go, and then you just have something that looks like you did, did it freehand with no guide. Cool, right? All right, let's do one with the water-soluble ink. And let's pick a different shape face. Maybe, maybe the round one. And I need a scrap piece of paper because this pen has been sitting for a while. Let's make sure it's working. Oh, yeah, it's working. So this Pilot Varsity ink, this is a disposable fountain pen. And um, the thing about it is it's water soluble. And when you get it wet, it does this. And so it's really great to add some shadows and things to your work. So we're going to use that to our advantage. And again, we're going to start with um, the pencil. I'm going to think I'm going to flip it this way. Okay. And we're going to trace our face shapes. Now these were sized in a certain way that say you wanted the round face, but you wanted to do these eyes or these features that you could totally use the features from one stencil in the shape of the face of another. Most of them you can do that with. Helps if you hold it down and it doesn't slide out from underneath you. Okay, so that's our face. So now the technique, <clears throat> the basic technique is gonna be the same, all right? So I'm going to do this in real time and then I'm going to take a water brush to it and we'll be right back. Okay, so there's our second face. So first face, second face. Now I did take the heat gun to it to dry it. Once you've done that, if, if there are any visible pencil lines, you can go in, dry it, dry it first, but you can go in and erase them.
Now you'll see because I got the paper wet, it's warped a little bit. I don't really mind that at all, but if you're gonna do this and you that does bug you, then use a journal that has maybe a thicker paper like mixed media paper. You do kind of want the surface to be smooth and you don't want to use something textured like cold press watercolor paper because it will make, it can make your pen sort of skip over the paper. That's fine if you don't mind the added texture in your drawing, um, but for these kind of practice little pieces that might drive you crazy. So anyway, I want you to try uh, these first two techniques for faces. Um, of course, using my stencils if you uh, want to buy them. Let's zoom out a little bit. Um, but using what you have, you could of course make your own stencil if you have a silhouette um, cutting machine or something similar. Um, but if you aren't so inclined, I have these and it is, you do get all four faces when you buy the stencil, you get one of these. So, um, and you can opt to do it package free naked and you save a dollar. I'm gonna, um, put some um, information in the description below, so do check it out. We're gonna have these videos. Um, I'm gonna do one or two faces in every video for a while until we fill this journal up. We're gonna be um, using the face guide to do collage and to do doodling over paint and all different kinds of things. So that's it for today. I hope it gives you an idea of what you can do, practicing your faces, creating something new, fun, and artistic and filling a little journal all at the same time. That's it for right now. Check out that video description for all relevant links and discount codes if applicable. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the description below. I mean, in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and above all, go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it, and I'll see you later. Bye, guys.